All right, so in this video, we have a new pair of sneakers that Nike released. Check out this box, first of all. It is a cardboard box, plain cardboard box, flip up lid, and it actually says we're working to ditch the double box and ship shoes in a single box. Uh, this actually came double box though. It actually came shipped in the uh, the other box. And I don't know how I would feel about them getting rid of regular boxes to ship shipping boxes in. I mean, you could see that they're planning on it because they have the perforation right here and uh, that. But this is what it says on the top. If you wanted to see that right there. They're looking at ditching boxes, possibly. I don't know quite how I feel about that. I'm a sneaker guy and I love to have my sneaker boxes. So if they got rid of the double box and just shipped in the box that you get the shoes, I don't know, it might make people kind of upset, but it is better for the environment, so I do appreciate that. However, I do recycle, so there's that. I did want to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Hibbit City Gear. If you guys have not followed them over on social yet, feel free to do that. I'll link them in the description. Check out their website. They have a really nice release calendar to let you guys know of future products coming out, as well as a nice selection for back to school stuff, which my kids are actually starting next week, which is nuts that they're finally going back. Some schools have started earlier than others, and they actually featured my kids on a post the other, the other day on Twitter and stuff, which was pretty cool to see. But anyways, if you guys are interested in buying these sneakers, Check the link in the description. It will take you over to Hibbit City Gear and you guys can shop around their site and check it out. Any which way, this is the Nike Zoom Fly 5 and check this beauty out. It is totally revamped from the previous model. And I stopped buying the Zoom Fly after I think the two or the three because it just was not a shoe that I found crossed over to the lifestyle segment very well. I think the Zoom Fly 3 was the one where I was like, yeah, it's, it's too narrow. It's not made for people that are not gonna be running in the shoe. And I get it, it's primarily a running sneaker. So you guys are probably like, duh. Has, like why would you even consider that well it's because there are sneakers like this that cross over really well to the lifestyle segment now this is a running sneaker as well retail is 180 the pegasus turbo twos uh and check out the widow's peak on the back here that was one of the big changes that they made on this any which way this uh shoe was amazing from the casual i absolutely love this shoe i this is a dead stock pair i have four pairs of these in my garage from the pegasus turbo ones and the twos and they never came out with a three yet. However, there is a newer version, the next, that's coming out soon that I'll have a, hopefully a review on those ones soon. But absolutely love this shoe. Uh, running shoe, but something that crossed over. Another shoe that is very good from the running segment that crosses over, it's the Pegasus, the regular Pegasus, not the Turbos. Uh, this one doesn't have Zoom X in the midsole or uh, React. The This one had dual density for those wanting Zoom X and React. This one just has React and also has uh, the uh, Zoom air units in this, two of them to be exact in the 39s. And I did a video on these already on my channel if you guys are curious. This is a great shoe as well that crossed over to the lifestyle segment. So the previous version of these did not cross over uh, to the lifestyle segment. They were just too narrow and like not very supportive. And I don't know, I felt like there were shoes that I was gonna fall out of on my heel. But this shoe is the one that they redid and they actually did Zoom X in this. Now it's not the Zoom X we would know and love. It is a little bit of a variation, but I will tell you guys, I tried these on next to this shoe and some of the others that I just recently got and I was blown away by how crazy soft and squishy this shoe felt on feet, comparison even to the Pegasus 39s. So the Zoom Flies is a shoe that I think is uh, an exceptional shoe for casual and one that I, I believe will be uh, very, very well uh, received shoe from a casual perspective. The interesting thing is, is when I looked online and saw some running reviews of this shoe, people absolutely hated this shoe for running. Like they were just like, it's too heavy, it's too bulky. They were hoping for something like this, the Pegasus Turbo 2, but they were looking for like the, the third version, but one with a plate in it because this actually has a plate down the, the midsole of the shoe, so you can't bend it backwards and stuff. Uh, but it's not like that at all, and I think that because of that, people were kind of let down. Let's get into some words of what Nike says about the shoe. It is the Nike Zoom Fly 5. It says, bridge the gap between your weekend training run and the race day in a durable design that can be deployed not just at the starting line of your favorite race, but in the days and months after your conquest. It offers comfort and reliability, but with a propulsive sensation that helps you feel fast and fresh. This kind of versatility is uncommon in the running era, but who said you can't have it all? The newly implemented Zoom X foam in the midsole takes an already respected, trusted shoe to another performance level that wasn't present in the Zoom Fly 4. The addition makes for a lighter, more responsive cushioning system. Take advantage of all these all-purpose traits that help you run easier, faster, and have more fun in your run. Stability where you need it. Both the forefoot and heel 
still offer a slightly wider base for a stable platform, so you can tackle turns and long runs with confidence. The full-length articulated plate delivers a propulsive sensation and a smooth transition at a variety of paces. The plate provides a sort of roll-forward feeling that makes you want to take on the next step. Upper is made with a lightweight mesh for a softer, more breathable feel that comforts your foot. Dynamic lace-up fit and supportive containment in the midfoot wrap around your foot for a contoured and secure fit. So my first impressions of the shoe is it was really comfortable on feet, as I already mentioned. Uh, I did like the updated midsole. I thought that was definitely uh, noteworthy, but then I flipped it over and I saw that and I was like, wait, because this is obviously Zoom X in the middle, but it's like a recycled Zoom X. It's broken down. The pieces are all kind of fused together. It is not a full length Zoom X midsole, which is kind of what they're leading us to believe with the article, at least that Nike published about the shoe. Reading deeper, it's actually an encased Zoom X midsole in a carrier foam. Now this carrier foam is quite nice, quite soft. And I have a durometer here that says it's about 33. So Nike React says it's about a 36 or so, so it's softer than Nike React. So that was a bit shocking and definitely the reason why there's added weight anytime you have a heavier foam or a carrier foam. Of course, it's gonna be heavier than just having Zoom X in the midsole. So the shoe weighs in at 10.7 ounces, which is a bit heavy versus the Pegasus Turbo 2s, which is 7.9 ounces and the regular Pegasus, which is 9.7 ounces. So I think the weight is definitely something that throws people off about the shoe because it is so darn heavy. Uh, it is not something that people were really loving. So I feel like that was an interesting move. However, the carrier foam is actually really soft and it feels really good on feet. That was one of the concerns that I had when I tried the shoes on again. I was like, you know what? You don't notice the carrier foam that much in the shoe. It just feels like a soft and squishy ride. There's a harmony underfoot of the Zoom X and the carrier foam. It doesn't feel like disconnected. So I do like the fact that they have that working for it. It's actually something that worked very well together and, and I like the overall results. The upper is pretty decent and, and I do like the big giant swoosh on the side as well. Uh, it's something that uh, I remember from uh, a couple years ago from some of the Zoom Flies and stuff. And I was like, yeah, it looks nice again. Nice to see that back there. Also on the tongue it says Nike Zoom Fly 5 and then it does have the pinwheel Nike logo, which I like as well. I don't love the fact that it's called the Zoom Fly 5. Nike has a really weird branding method because it's Nike Zoom Fly 5, but there's no Air Zoom in this model. Nike says Air Zoom in this Pegasus 39, and it does have Zoom in the forefoot and the heel, but the midsole is actually made with Nike React. Nike says Zoom X on this model right here, the Pegasus Turbo 2, but it's not Zoom X where the Zoom X is. This is actually Nike React. The Zoom X layer is actually the top layer, not the bottom. So to call these the Zoom Fly is just a terrible use of words. It's like they're using Zoom, and then they're using Air Zoom, and then some of them have relevance and some of them don't. I think that the zoom fly together just means fast shoe, but maybe don't use the word zoom. Maybe call it the quick fly or something. Maybe I'm the only one that faults Nike for doing that, but it is confusing because you see zoom fly and you think maybe there's Nike zoom in the midsole or something like that. And it's, it's not the same thing. It's actually a different technology. Now for the sizing, I would say these are true to size. Check out the width of the forefoot. It's absolutely huge. And then the back makes it actually a bit bigger, especially than the previous version. So I don't need a wide version of these. This is actually just a fine version. True to size, meaning I'm a 9.5 and this fits me just fine with a 9.5. Comfort rating, I would give it an eight out of 10. It's really, really squishy underfoot. Uh, overall sensation is great. And there is a little bit of a rocking motion because of the plate. Uh, but it has a nice heel toe transition with a really nice cushion stack. Again, runners, I'm not sure why they don't like these so much, but from a casual, I'm like walking in clouds. Like it's insanely nice. Even though it's confusing and it's not Zoom X, it's a carrier foam with Zoom X, but still very good. Wide feet friendly rating, I would give it a seven out of 10. Again, it's pretty wide in the forefoot and then the heel is wider than the previous version. Hands down better than the fours. If the fours were too narrow for you, maybe try the fives. Uh, cause these are again, really good. Breathability rating, average pair of Nikes, I'll give it a seven out of 10. And then the foam density rating, I would give a 7.8 out of 10. Feels better on feet than Nike React, to be honest, like more soft, squishy, but it's heavier than regular Zoom X. And the ground feel rating, there's not much there. I'll give it a six out of 10. Obviously you're not gonna have a lot of ground feel because of the max cushion stack. If you want lower ground feel, get a lower stack. Like an example of a shoe that has some nice cushioning, but a very low stack, some nice ground feel is this pair right here. This is the Fuel Cell Super Comp. Pacer from New Balance, really, really incredible shoe right here. Stability rating, even though it is wider, I'd still give it like a six and a half out of 10 because of how high of a stack it is. There is a little bit of like wobbliness. However, it's not terrible and it is still something that you can wear casual, but it's just not, not noticeable if you will. Traction rating, I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10. I like the traction pads. It's huge and beefy in the front and also in the back. Some people might not like that because it's too much traction. There's no cutouts, so the weight is definitely there, but uh, if you want something with a little bit extra, like this is a, a nice option. It doesn't cover this section right here, so I expect some rubbage 
uh, on top of this, but still some nice uh, thick traction on the bottom. Durability rating, I'd give probably a seven out of 10, just the average rating for a Nike shoe, just not anything amazingly good, but not anything super terrible. But that is obviously subject to change. I haven't worn these obviously a ton. If you guys have a difference in opinion, of course, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section and say, yes, these things are not durable at all. The upper ripped on me or the midsole split on me or whatever else. Uh, you guys are good at pointing that out. And something that you guys pointed out on this shoe right here, uh, I love this shoe and I never had this problem, but a lot of you guys did where this actually split the uh, back section here. I've had two, three of my close friends have this part split where the Zoom X and the React uh, combine right here. For some reason, the, the little widow's peak split and opened up and I never had that issue, but you guys have had that issue. I don't think that you're gonna have that problem with this shoe because uh, it's not two different types of material. There's no glue there. And they also change it up quite a bit like this. I think aesthetics, I would actually give this like a 7.8 out of 10. I really like the look of it. I think it's very different, futuristic looking, also blocky, but I like the, the overall block look on the back, the midsole. And the upper is just kind of a traditional upper, but again, the Nike Swoosh, I actually really like it. It's obnoxious, but uh, I mean, it's, it's nice. And I like the, the look and feel. The collar has just enough padding. The tongue has just enough padding. And uh, I don't know, all in all, it's just a really impressive pair of sneakers for a casual. So the three things that I like the best about the shoe, the squishy midsole for sure, really love that. Even though it's not Zoom X fully, even though it's not Nike React, Whatever it is, it's actually really, really good. I would be surprised if it's not Cushlon, but it's really soft, and I couldn't find anything that says what the carrier foam is. If you guys know, leave a comment and help me out. I do like that it has a wider body as well. That is a plus. And then also, I like that it is more stable than the previous versions, something where this is actually a versatile model where you can actually lifestyle. I like that they changed the back section right here as well, so it's not a widow's peak. And I also like that there's a detached tongue so I can wear these and loosen them up as much as I need. Some of the things that I would change, if anything, I don't think I need a plate in the bottom of the shoe. I know that it's something for runners for sure. And the plate isn't so exaggerated that you feel like you're gonna like fall from wearing these things from a casual. However, it, it's just not really necessary from a casual perspective. So the plate would probably uh, not be necessary for casual. However, obviously, you know, this is a running shoe. So the reason why they have it in there makes sense. And I also don't like the fact that they have the Zoom X branding on the carrier foam. They should have it here, if anything, because that's where the Zoom X is. This isn't Zoom X, so it's misleading. The last thing that I would probably change is the weight. The overall weight of the shoe is heavy at 10 ounces, but I feel like it's not a heavy shoe on feet, but comparative to like other stuff out there that's like six or seven ounces, like this is a tank. Again, if you guys are interested in buying a pair of these, check the link in the description. But my final thoughts on this product, I think that runners seem to dislike the new version, but for casual use, this thing is very good. It's something that I really like. Detached tongue, wider foot friendly, more comfortable and squishy on feet comparison to like the PEG 39. Wish it didn't have the roller plate again, but all in all, a very solid pair of sneakers. I was worried about that midsole carrier foam, but again, it's, it's quite good. And I think that you guys should maybe give these a consideration from a casual perspective. If you guys have bought a pair of these and are watching the video and you guys agree or disagree with anything I said, please feel free to leave a comment and let other people know what you guys think because I, again, think it's a pretty fantastic shoe. And um, just showing you guys the side-by-side -side of the Pegasus like very, very similar midsole, but obviously the stack is much bigger on the, the Zoom Fly 5s. So all in all, a great product, uh, something that I'm very, very uh, strong on. I think that it's just a, a great overall experience on feet and something that I'm very happy that I picked uh, up because uh, it was just one of those ones where I was very curious about it, seeing if they made improvements for casual people like myself. And I gotta tell you that they did it. They came, they came through and it's pretty good. So here we have it right here. In the front, if you guys again want to buy a pair, link in the description. Appreciate all for stopping by and watching. If you guys enjoy these type of videos, uh, feel free to subscribe. I have a bunch of other uh, sneaker kind of technology, running sneaker technology videos that I'm just personally interested in. It's something that I just have a lot of fun uh, trying out. And hopefully you guys enjoy. Have a good one and hopefully we'll be back for some more videos. All right, peace guys.